Welcome to the Radiology Vault, an open repository for radiology educational content designed for learners and medical professionals. Presented by the Michigan Medicine Department of Radiology. Hello, my name is Bill Truesdell and I'm a cardiothoracic radiologist at the University of Michigan. Today I'm going to talk about coronary anatomy, which is a short topic, but I find it to be high yield and highly testable. I have no relevant disclosures, we're going to begin our discussion today by reviewing the coronary anatomy, followed by the sinus of Valsalva anatomy. Finally, there are going to be a couple of short summary slides to review the information and give some helpful mnemonics before we finish up. We will start by reviewing the coronary anatomy of this coronary CTA. As we scroll through this cine stack of images, the first vessel that we will see is the left main coronary artery arising from the left coronary sinus. This typically bifurcates into two vessels called the LAD, or the left anterior descending artery, which runs through the interventricular groove, and the LCX, or left circumflex artery, which runs through the posterior atrioventricular groove. Occasionally, this will have a trifurcation with a third vessel coming out of the middle, which would be termed a ramus intermedius. Following the LAD, you see these small branches that course along the lateral surface of the left ventricle, which are called the diagonal arteries, uh, abbreviated as D1, D2, etc. We will also see these small vessels diving down into the interventricular septum, which are appropriately called the septal perforator arteries here and here. Following the left circumflex artery, we'll see it gives off these branches which course uh, laterally over the surface of the heart called the obtuse marginal branches and would be abbreviated OM1, OM2, etc. Coming back up to see the right coronary artery, you'll see the small first branch that arises from the right coronary artery coursing superiorly to the right ventricular outflow tract called the conus branch. That is typically the first branch of, off of the RCA. We'll also see this small branch coursing posteriorly around the aortic root, which is, would be the SA nodal branch supplying the sinoatrial node. As we follow the RCA inferiorly, we'll see another branch arise called the acute marginal branch, which courses uh, anteriorly over the surface of the right ventricle. And finally, as we follow it inferiorly, we'll see it terminates as the posterior descending artery or the PDA. This would make this a right dominant circulation, which is defined as what circulation uh, supplies the PDA. In about 80% of the people, uh, it'll be right dominant circulation, and the other 20% will be split between left dominant circulation from the left circumflex artery or co-dominant circulation, which is supplied by the right coronary artery and left circumflex artery. The last thing we're going to cover today is sinus of Valsalva anatomy, which is another high yield, highly testable topic. There are typically three sinus of, sinuses of Valsalva, which are helpfully named right, left, and non-coronary sinus, depending on the coronary artery that arises from it. A classic way to test your knowledge of the anatomy is with an image like this, showing the three sinuses of Valsalva in plane and asking you to name them. The easiest way I find to do this is to start by identifying the interatrial septum, which we see here. Once you find that, you know that the non-coronary sinus is always going to point toward the interatrial septum. If you are not sure which of the two chambers you are seeing are the atria, a last ditch clue is that there's often a contrast opacification difference between the atria, and as we'll see here, the left atrium is enhancing more brightly than the right atrium. Although obviously this is not always a reliable clue. Next, I try to find some piece of anatomy to help me identify what is anterior versus posterior. That could be a little bit of sternum, as we see here anteriorly, or they could show you a little bit of spine to indicate where the posterior of the patient is. Once you have that figured out, you know that the right coronary sinus is always going to point anteriorly. Now, by process of elimination, you know that the final remaining sinus is going to be the left. Also, remember, if you are totally lost and desperate, if you see a little bit of coronary artery like we see here, you can at least give yourself a 50-50 shot by knowing that that will not be the non-coronary sinus, and is in fact usually going to be the left coronary sinus because of the course of the left main coronary artery often intersects with the plane of the sinuses of Valsalva. But again, that is not always as reliable. So now we will summarize the anatomy one more time. The left main coronary artery typically bifurcates into two vessels, the LAD and the left circumflex artery. A normal variant to be aware of is the left main trifurcation where there is a middle branch between these two vessels termed the ramus intermedius. Branches of the LAD include diagonal branches, which are variable in number and can be labeled D1, D2, and so on. Septal perforators also arise from the LAD and can be identified by their course, which dives into the septum, as the name would suggest. 
the left circumflex artery gives off obtuse marginal branches, which can be labeled OM1, OM2, and so on. It's a silly mnemonic, but I remember this by thinking circumflex with an OM in the middle for obtuse marginal. Finally, the right coronary artery can give off a number of branches, usually with the first branch being the conus branch, which supplies the RVOT. The SA nodal branch can be identified by its posterior course towards the interatrial septum. The RCA also gives off acute marginal branches, which I remember with the letter A, RCA, acute for marginal, versus OM, circumflex. Lastly, in right dominant individuals, the RCA terminates as the posterior descending artery, which occurs approximately 80% of the time. Otherwise, patients may have left dominant circulation, where it is supplied by the left circumflex, or co-dominant circulation, where it is supplied by both. Lastly, we will finish up by reviewing our sinus of Selva anatomy. There are typically three sinuses, labeled as the right, left, and non-coronary sinuses, based on the coronary artery that arises from them. Landmarks to remember are that the right sinus points anteriorly, the non-coronary sinus points to the interatrial septum, and the remaining sinus will be the left sinus of Selva. So the key is finding your anatomic line landmarks and identifying anterior versus posterior and which chambers are the atria. If you can remember the anatomy discussed in this video, you will be well on your way to reviewing cardiac CTs. Thank you.